Many fragile states are, face exposure to um, numerous climate or environmental risks such as sea level rise, drought, extreme um, or more intense natural disasters. In terms of um, the vulnerability, however, vulnerability is a combination of not just exposure but also sensitivity and ad adaptive capacity. So the first two, uh, exposure and sensitivity, are in the hands of luck, you know, that's in the weather systems and dependent on the topography of the country. However, adaptive capacity, that depends significantly on governance and stability. Now, in a fragile state, governance and stability are going to be seriously affected by conflict. So we have this inextricable link between climate change and, and security. And so if we're trying to understand how to address the issue, we need to understand these linkages. So what we've been doing at International Alert for the past eight years is trying to really drill down um, and establish an empirical evidence base to understand what nuances, what, what the specifics of these links between climate change and security look like. And we have, um, I guess, five key areas of, of um, or narratives around ways to address these linked challenges of climate change and security. The first is around getting the institutions right. A lot of the risks um, faced by fragile states aren't um, purely around responding to climate risks and the, the natural hazard in and of itself. It's around ensuring that there are appropriate institutions that can deal with the uncertainty and the flux the unpredictable nature of, of changing weather, not um, simply the direct impacts, but also the indirect impacts on, on communities, physical safety, on food security, on, on, on clean water and various other basic services. The second um, narrative is around bringing in the private sector and, and understanding the link between resilience and trade. This is often um, overlooked in climate change adaptation, the traditional responses to climate change adaptation. But our work shows that the private sector plays a significant role. It can be positive and it can be negative. However, however, we need to understand what that role is and how to ensure that we minimize the negative impacts and maximize the positive role that the private sector can play. The third issue is around facing the challenges of migration. Now, there's a lot of talk um, around the role that migration plays. Um, linked to environmental change and climate change, but of course there are complex um, drivers of, of migration. Um, but there are significant security implications of this, but we need to understand in a more nuanced way what these challenges look like. It's not simply going to be international migration from sinking small islands to the developed world. A lot of it is rural urban migration. It's going to be um, changes in seasonal migration patterns amongst agricultural workers. We need to understand these, um, these trends and, and the peace and security implications of these trends so that they can be managed peacefully. The fourth issue links to, um, uh, to resilience, to understanding that we need to focus on resilience. And this means um, embracing complexity, understanding the various linked dimensions of, of resilience. It's not simply about climate impacts, it's not simply about disasters and risk reduction, it's about understanding all the various facets of the challenge of resilience. Households don't face single risks in isolation, they face climate risks such as increased rainfall in conjunction with increased livelihoods, insecurity, lack of opportunities, um, challenges in, in education to get more skills and training, to get um, additional um, options to, 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 to build their resilience. So we need to be able to deal with complexity better within our institutions and, and within project interventions in fragile states. And the fifth point is the need to rethink development. Now development plays a significant role in addressing the challenges of both conflict and climate change, um, be it through climate change adaptation or disaster risk reduction or through peace building interventions. However, the current approach to development is, is seriously limited in that it's very siloed um, at the headquarters level, the way institutions are designed and, and how projects are funded and implemented on the ground. These silos remain from the top all the way down to the grassroots. And this is a real obstacle to to really addressing um, resilience at the community and household level. We need to rethink how development happens, how it's funded, and how structures um, responsible for development are, um, are structured such that we can cross these sectoral boundaries and, and promote complex solutions to complex problems.